It is December 6, 2018. I probably spent way too much time trying to figure out this winter storm. How do you figure things out today when man is in control and photoshopping satellites and uh, radar, perhaps the future radar? Um, I don't know, but I... I'm going to play some of these mainstream media news clips and I need to ask, did you get snow in North Carolina? Because the video that I posted last night, I showed in telecast. There was no sign of any precipitation anywhere near North Carolina. So let's listen. You know, it, it's kind of like having your mind trapped in yesterday when things made sense. So now we're living a whole new time when nothing makes sense, but you still have that mind where you've got to make sense of it, but it just doesn't add up. From coast to coast over the next few days, while winter has not officially arrived, it typically arrives on my birthday, every December 21st. Oh, really? Yeah, which is why I hate it so much. <laughs> um, much of the U.S. saw extremely cold temperatures this morning. I hate it for a whole host of other reasons. <laughs> We're looking at some, some of them. Palm Spring, California. Okay, this is Boone, North uh, Carolina, but Palm Springs, California, parts of Nevada, North Carolina, New Jersey all saw snowfall yesterday, and the conditions could get worse. So CBS News weather producer David Parkinson is here to be the bearer of good news. No, not okay. good news. Um, North Carolina. Did you see any snow? North Carolina, you've got to let us know. All right. Here we have the Long Range Future Cast. And this is a North Carolina um, forecast. This is a computer model indicating that everything really starts late, very late Saturday night, more likely early on Sunday morning. As you can see, by about 6 a.m. Sunday morning, we start to see an icy mix of the Charlotte area. That's some sleet, freezing rain and sleet and snow. That's all snow in the North Carolina mountains. We get to about 11 o'clock Sunday night. So between 5 a.m. Sunday morning, 11 o'clock Sunday night, that's a continuation of a lot of snowfall, especially in the mountains. Notice the change over here. That's some sleet, some rain, freezing rain and snow. So it's really kind of a wintry mix of the Charlotte area, but it's all snow in the mountains and the foothills. That's Sunday night at 11 o'clock that we take you to Monday morning at 9 a.m. The precipitation continues at that time. It's a changeover to rain here, north of here, sleet, freezing rain and snow as it starts to track away and move out of here by early in the afternoon. So we're looking at overnight, uh, Saturday night into Sunday, Monday, and then really late Monday night into very early on Tuesday morning. A significant amount of precipitation is expected in those areas. This is another model looking at that uh, 3 p.m. on Saturday afternoon. This is uh, meaning Saturday should be okay right through the afternoon. Then we get to about midnight as we get into Sunday morning. We start to see that uh, precipitation moving right into the mountains and eventually the Shaw Metro. That's 7 a.m. Uh, on uh, Sunday morning. That is all snow from Shaw to the mountains of foothills along the interstate corridor as well. Then this is Sunday afternoon at 4 o'clock, and that is a kind of a wintry mix here in the Charlotte Metro area. That's some sleet and snow here. It's all snow from Asheville to Boone, Blowing Rock, all the way over towards the Triad. Then we get into that time frame around 10 o'clock Sunday night. We see a changeover in the Charlotte Metro area to some rain, sleet, freezing rain, and snow, a wintry mix here. That's uh, mainly snow in the mountains. And then along the I-40 quarter, that's some snow and sleet in those areas. Once again, we talk about Monday morning, we still could see a wintry mix in the Charlotte area before that storm system is gone and out of here. So it could be a major problem for several days across the entire area. It begins late. All right, I will link below to everything, but you know, uh, trying to get a handle on this storm. This is in telecast now. Okay, so this storm, it's now Thursday, 1247 p.m. on the East Coast. Um, they were claiming that the video that I posted last night, they were claiming that by Friday into Saturday, this storm was going to be all over the south 
and the southeast, coming into the southeast. If this is the storm. Is this the storm? It does not look like Houston is getting the rain that they claim that Houston was going to be getting, or this entire area. As you can see in the video that I posted last night, this entire area was, let me see here. Okay, this guy did that broad, the, the, uh, the forecasting for this storm. Oh, this is mine, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so how do you go to here from here? Well, we know that they can do that with the technology. But it, I'm telling you, it really is just a flippy, trippy, weird, um, bizarre time to be living when they come out with these, oh my God, major, 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 major storm, um, one to three feet in South Carolina was reported by AccuWeather and a half inch of ice. But this is what we are seeing. So they will either have to blow up this, which looks like just ordinary precipitation, or this storm, <clears throat> excuse me, from California, they're going to be blowing this up, maybe this one down uh, Mexico, heading into Arizona. As you can see, it is being steered and manipulated. The outer edges have that sawtooth pattern and it's being held in place and then pushed up into Arizona. Because you don't see this moving any anywhere down south. It's being blockaded right here, but you can see the extremely low frequencies manipulating it right here. Right here. Oh, and it seems to be coming close, uh, coming out of uh, what is close to Interstate 8. Along the interstates, we've got an awful lot of Gwen Towers and Cell Towers. So these lines, for anybody who doesn't know, these very straight-edged lines right here showing up, that comes from extremely low frequencies, which they use to control the weather. So, yeah, can they actually take this storm and bring it up so that it begins to go through Texas and uh, along the south to even look like, <clears throat> let me see if I can get that, uh, is it this? Yeah. Can they, can they bring that storm that I just showed you on Intellicast and level it out, hold it in place, blockade it, so that it travels right across the southeast? Yes, they can. Yes, they can. All right. Um, apparently, there was snow in Virginia, right? Berryville, Virginia. Oh, boy. I have to say, just watching two dogs play outside the snow. What is this? It hurts. What is this? My dogs. So, uh, Boone, North Carolina, Virginia, Berryville, you got snow, I guess, huh? Well, in telecast, they showed nothing. Nothing. I see nothing, which is what I said in this video. 
Oh my God, I can't believe what we are living. Yeah, there was nothing. All right. Um, I want to play a little bit of One Pacific Redwood. Now, One Pacific Redwood and Mike Morales. You need to be subscribed to both of them because they are doing an excellent job on giving you the information that you need to understand that these storms are controlled. Controlled. Weather is being controlled. Got a dead frame. I'm going to get rid of that. There we go. So this is a very large system. We can see California right here. This is a this system here encompasses probably uh, California, Nevada, Utah, and Arizona. You can just stick this weather system right on top of all of those five states, or, or rather four states. Um, that's a very big system. We can see some straight edges near the vortex. So there's a satellite transmitter manipulating uh, the pressure in this uh, weather system. We can see also that it's blockaded. We've got jet stream flow moving to the uh, east. Let's look at that jet stream map right now real quick, and we can see that. We've got high-speed flow all the way down through here around this uh, low and into California. But yet, looking at the, uh, the big, uh, or rather the, uh, the western U.S. water vapor loop, we see that there is a disruption here in the jet stream. We've got no water vapor in this area. This uh, water vapor flow, this is the jet stream. This is a, uh, basically a freight train of water vapor, which is moving right around that low. And into California, we see this huge void where there is evaporation occurring right here on top of the jet stream. And so I'd like to hear the meteorologists explain how, how and why this is happening. They, they won't be able to provide an answer because this is defying... Not only that, but look at what's happening here. This jet stream should, should be flowing right into that vortex, but it's completely blockaded. There's no water vapor getting into this vortex from this, uh, from this side, from the east. So I'd like to say once again that the, the profession, the science of meteorology has been hijacked by, by rogues. We have uh, a criminal syndicate an organized crime syndicate, the FBI and the DOJ right here in this country that are not doing anything about this. We've got the EPA, which is not doing anything about the, uh, the, the aerosols being sprayed, these toxic chemical aerosols that are being sprayed to manipulate weather patterns. It's good that we're getting some rain, uh, but uh, there are bigger problems uh, that, that need to be looked at by the uh, leaders of the country. Let's go ahead and look here at the uh, surface analysis. Okay, the link will be below. I do want to show you what I caught last night on Intelecast, the satellite. And if you can't see right now that this is man creating cloud because Mother Nature does not work in straight lines, that is the most obvious for anybody to see, Mother Nature works in circular patterns. She does not work like this. Man does, laying those aerosols. You can see that this is completely engineered. So, on radar, you don't see the clouds, right? You see the precipitation. But we saw nothing. This was last night. So we didn't see uh, anything happening in Texas. But they were laying it out. They were laying out all of the aerosols, these heavy metals, the particulates, which they can just hit with lasers to bring about snow or rain. So it we we don't have to see anything on radar anymore. 
when they hit it with these electromagnetic frequencies, that's when it will pop up on radar. The forecasters, these meteorologists from mainstream media, they're getting their script to read. That's why it's hard to make sense of anything when you're doing your own research. So yes, you can see that this is the aerosol spraying, uh, the geoengineered storm that we will eventually see on radar. And anybody knowing this should be really upset about what they are seeing. So this is the National Mosaic. Uh, we do see, you know, a, a laser beam, an electromagnetic beam, only one. Funny how quiet is our, um, and I'll get to it in one second, um, this national high resolution reflectivity composite next rad let me slow it down and I checked it out oh wow the country's very quiet yeah they seem to only have to search a lot of people are saying these are search beams it has nothing to do with uh, weather no please please I guess they're searching areas of our country now where we see the huge fanned out beams jutting out from areas of the country and then nothing. Some people say that they're searching for planes. Oh, okay. This is how radar works, Carol. Please! Planes are flying 24-7. If that were the case, then we would see this 24-7, and we don't. So this storm here, um, we've got this um, extremely low frequency shooting out from New Mexico. We see how level is this storm. So some people were saying that this was coming from California, this storm. Well, it looks like this storm in California right now is heading up north. Moving up north, you've got this extremely low frequency hit. Where'd it go? Here. Okay, that is coming out of California. It looks like they're manipulating this storm to go up north. And this storm may be the storm that they're talking about that we will be getting. Or they're simply going to take from all of the aerosol spraying that they have been laying out, look at this nice, and oh God, it goes right to the upstate South Carolina. Um, South Carolina, I'm not from here, don't know much about it, but boy, there's a lot of activity going on in this state that I can't quite get a handle on why, but this is the worldview. This is December 4, and look at all of the laying of the aerosols for that storm that you just saw on Intellicast. No, this is not Mother Nature. She does not work like this. But they are laying it out, boy. And they're bringing it right across to the east. Now, the 5th, which was yesterday, 
um, just heavier spraying and it looks like well is this the storm that they were showing on a telecast going into Arizona um, these two are meeting up well you see all the microwaves right here all of these ripples um, and all of the spraying up here. Um, we got heavily hit several days. The 6th, we're not going to be able to see um, because it is the 6th. So, oh boy, um, the thing is, we just don't know what they have planned. Look at this, this uh, GO-16, which is really remarkable. Uh, look at all of this sawed-off piece of cloud right here, and all of the overlaying of the aerosols. Look at all of the aerosols being laid out right here. This is the making of that storm, right here. Now, you don't see any precipitation on IntelliCast yet, but they are making it. They're creating it. And yeah, I would say we're in big trouble weather, you know? It is... It, it's a powerful weapon. And they're using it, boy. The, um... These, this is the GFS precipitation now, this is, this begins December 7. And look at how this is, um, where is the hair? Look at how it blows up. And this goes through to December 15. There is another storm that they're going to be conjuring up for us. So many people are talking about sorry how Christmas is we're also going to be hit with another storm. You just saw it pass. Let me just go back. All right, so this is um, December 6. December 6, okay? Look at December 6. You've got some precipitation in Texas, but I have to say, IntelliCast doesn't show that kind of solid precipitation. Okay? So I think when they're showing us present current radar, they can't Photoshop that. But when they have these forecasting models, they can. So December 6, you see from, and this is Texas right down here, okay, all of this is precipitation. Oh, wow. Well, I don't know what that is, a truck. Um, but let's just scroll on through. But man, it's difficult to get. Because if I zoom out, you can barely see it. 
but I want to take you through. Okay, December 7. December 7. This is tomorrow. So this storm that you're seeing right here is going to blow up. It's going to blow up if they get it right. That's December 8th or December 7, oh, 18 hours. So that's Friday night and then into Well, they have a different forecasting time, so this is what is going to be happening with that storm. December 8, December 8, where this storm is going to be sitting over Texas. Really? I guess so. December 7, the rain gets more intense the darker shade of green far more intense but it's now kind of exploding in yeah look at this and look at this which is looking like a harp next round ring where they use radar to send high frequency high frequency heating of the ionosphere yeah, this thing is completely manipulated. And it's going to be sitting for a while over Texas. And then we get to move on across into the southeast. If this actually occurs, as they claim it's going to, this is December 9, it's going to be bad. Though I have seen forecasts where they're showing it's just going to be rain in South Carolina or uh, a mix of, it'll be slate, sleet, I'm sorry. So December 9, December 9, Florida, South Carolina. Well, this one is showing snow in uh, upstate South Carolina and North Carolina. December 9 hangs out for a while. And then we're off into the Atlantic, but here comes another storm that it looks like they just blow up and bring bring to the southeast again. Can't seem to move this. December 15. So it may not be Christmas, it may be two storms back to back that we get hit with. This goes right on up to December 22nd. Now, I also got comments from people who were saying they have hyped this storm up for a week. I heard nothing about it, and I am very grateful to a South uh, Carolina subscriber who also said she heard nothing, nothing about it. So how is it that this could have been hyped up for a week? There are people who are going to be hit with this storm who haven't heard anything about it. Yes, we're living a very strange time. And that's why I have said that now is a time that you need to be prepared for anything. I will link below to everything. Um, it's unfortunate that we are living this time because it's a dangerous time. It's a very dangerous time. So I hope nothing really bad happens. 
and I hope everybody is prepared in this entire area of the country from Texas, Oklahoma, yeah, Tennessee, Kentucky, uh, Virginia, West Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, uh, Alabama, uh, Mississippi, all of us down here. Ciao, guys.